Member for Saanich South. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to debate the proposed overhaul to BC's successful recycling program. The new system, run by Multi-Materials British Columbia, is slated to begin in less than eight weeks. The Premier has called the introduction of MMBC a bumpy road. For many BC businesses, residents and environmentalists, this road is not bumpy, it's utterly impassable. In my view, this new system will not represent the best interests of British Columbians, BC businesses or the environment for five simple reasons. First, incorporation documents reveal that MMBC is a dummy corporation. Although MMBC is registered as a society in BC, in truth, it is neither a society or British Columbian. It is fully controlled by Robert Chant, the Toronto-based Vice President of Loblaws, and John Coyne, the Toronto-based Vice President of Unilever Canada, and their employee. Two impacts are critical to understand. One, loss of competition. They are setting up a system that is dangerously close to monopoly. This will inevitably lead to a decrease in quality of services and increase in price. The supposed free marketers over there seem to need an economics refresher. Two, loss of a democratic and local control. Municipalities are directly accountable to residents. Councillors and staff hear immediately when there are problems. If those problems aren't solved, councillors pay the price at the next municipal election. The contracts municipalities have been pressured into signing include inadequate funding formulas, business-killing penalties for non-compliance, and even a gag clause, which prevents them from reporting out on recycling data. By allowing MMBC to be created as a dummy corporation for Ontario big business, the government ignores that the short-term profit maximization ethos of corporate titans will often conflict with the best interests of the people and environment, uh, environment of our province. The second criticism I want to raise is the changes that the government is pushing through for recycling in BC will lead to consumers getting gouged with yet another hidden tax. This tax is on recycling. MMBC will be funded by applying a uniform new cost to big business, which will pass, pass them on to consumers. But in many municipalities, we already are paying the cost of recycling on our property taxes. Municipalities have been clear that this amount won't be rebated to the taxpayers, but the government did not require this rebate when setting up the new system. The slogan for MMBC should probably be recycle once, but pay twice. Moreover, in parts of BC, people will end up paying the costs of recycling through this hidden tax, but not all will be able to access MMBC services, like Kamloops, for example. They will be paying for nothing. My third point is that MMBC, uh, the government is allowing profit to be extracted by the businesses behind MMBC, while externalizing much of the business risk onto municipalities and small business. The monopolistic system this government has set up gives the small players, including our municipalities, no leverage to bargain for fair terms. Small but established companies like Gibson's Resource Recovery Centre are watching as their business models are ruined. Stu Young, Mayor of Langford, says the MMBC plan is fatally flawed. He notes that the average contamination of mixed residential recycling picked up by haulers is 13%. But MMBC is putting a $5,000 fine on loads from haulers if contamination rates are over 3%. Young says 3% is, quote, unobtainable, unquote. My fourth point is that this system is fatally flawed because it fails to create price signals or incentives for consumers to recycle. The refundable beverage container program is an excellent example of what does work. Consumers see at the time of purchase the environmental cost of their spending habits and are therefore incentivized to change. Once the product is consumed, there is a profit motiva motivation, the deposit, to ensure it's recycled. This system has proven successful for years, and yet the government, in its zeal to kowtow to big business, is not expanding it. In fact, the government is allowing MMBC to undermine these established businesses. For example, MMBC will collect refundable containers themselves, pocketing the value of the resource and reducing the market share for established successful businesses such as return it depots. Finally, the government has proposed to change the recycling program. Um, it fails the most important test of all. 
They don't address the environmental challenge that led to the recycling movement in the first place. In reality, MMBC won't even capture 50% of total recyclables out there. The 75% number we hear ad nauseum is a soft target for three years from now. It doesn't take into account at least half of the recyclables in BC which are generated outside the household. Furthermore, I challenge the government to provide any evidence that the logic supposedly behind the MMBC change, namely the concept of extended producer responsibility, uh, will lead to reductions in packaging. It will not. The simple truth is that packaging decisions are determined by far more consequential drivers than a very tiny per unit cost which is hidden from consumers. For substantive environmental change, we need to demand a policy based on full life cycle analysis of packaging, and then we need a government with the courage to push change based on design for environment principles. What we have instead is MMBC, a fatally flawed policy outcome from a government without sufficient courage to face our environmental challenges. Member for Warner and Monashi. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, and, and I appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to speak to this uh, very important uh, topic this morning. The purpose of any uh, waste reduction program is exactly that, is to, is to get waste out of the landfills. And um, I've spent a lot of years in local government, and I chaired the Solid Waste Management Committee for the North Okanagan Regional District. I helped put together the Solid Waste Management Plan for the North Okanagan Regional District, and we were we were leaders in, in the program uh, around the province. Uh, in the village of Lumbee, where I was the mayor, uh, councillor at the time, uh, we introduced voluntary curbside recycling, uh, and then a year later, we went to a minimum uh, garbage, uh, two bag garbage limit. We saw our garbage tonnage drop and our recycling tonnage go up uh, markedly just simply because people uh, didn't have the option. Well, they had the option. They could go to the village office and buy a little tag for a dollar and put it on their extra garbage bag. So by getting pe into people's conscience and also their pocketbook, we were able to, uh, to change their thinking. So, you know, in, in 1986, or 87, I'm, memory's getting a little slack, but I attended an uh, Okanagan Mainline Municipal Association conference in Asturias, and, and one of the workshops was on solid waste management. And I signed up for it because I had no idea what solid waste meant. Uh, Fifteen minutes into the, ten minutes I suppose, into it, I found out we're talking about garbage. And they talked at that time about, about the effect on communities and the environment that, that solid waste was going to have into the 21st century, and we certainly were having this discussion here today because of that. The purpose of MMBC is to e do exactly what, what it's intended to do, and that's to, re to reduce the amount of waste in the system. The, there's all kinds of different, different ways. And you look at the lower mainland now, they, they haul their, uh, their garbage, if you will, their waste to, uh, to Ashcroft and dump it. Well, eventually those landfills are going to be full and we're not going to have an opportunity to do this. So, so MMBC came forward <clears throat> as, a, as an opportunity to change people's way of doing business and to put the onus on the original producers of the, of the waste product or the recyclable product, put the onus on them to reduce. Um, it was interesting to hear, to hear the, uh, the member uh, opposite bring up, um, you know, the effect on small business and so on. And I've been in this, uh, in this uh, house for five years, and I would suggest that, Mr. Speaker, in that five years, I've never seen members of the opposition support any initiative that we've brought forward to help small business or medium-sized business. So it's, it's, it's quite uh, refreshing to hear them come forward and, and talk about the benefits to small business. This. Uh, the program was initiated back in, in 2011, or the discussion was initiated in 2011, and we made a lot of changes from the original, uh, the original concept. And one of the big ones was, was with consultation with uh, small business, medium-sized business, the Chamber of Commerce, and, uh, and municipalities around the province. We changed the criteria, and, and, and one of the big things for, for the smaller businesses, because they were concerned, and, and, and justifiably so, and um, we, the three criteria that if you if you meet any one of those three criteria, you're exempt from the, from the program. If you do under a million dollars of annual revenue, if you produce under a ton of, of uh, recyclables, 
and uh, as you or if if you operate uh, as a single point of retail sale and as a sole proprietorship or you're uh, not a member of a franchise or a bigger organization so so for all those smaller businesses that opportunity has changed so so we're pleased to see that we've got uh, I'm running out of time here uh, all kinds of validation on this chambers of commerce local government uh, opportunities for for local government to uh, either continue the way they're doing it, to to uh, uh, have uh, uh, MMBC put their contractors in there to pick up. It's not going to change the roadside, uh, the blue box programs. I know in the village of Lumbee where I live, there's not going to be any change to the to the pickup. It's going to be picked up the same as it always was. Um, and as far as the taxes go, and to the member comment about in the past, there's the opportunity for for people in, within the communities to change their local government if they're not happy. If those local governments don't choose to either pass that savings along to, to, the, uh, to their uh, constituents or uh, you know, put, put that, that saving into some other type of a program that would uh, to see uh, waste going out of the stream, then the folks in the community have the opportunity to change their local government. We do that uh, every three now. In the future, we'll be looking at four years. So those opportunities are still thank there. That doesn't member. change anything at all. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you to the member for bringing this up. Member. Thank you. And I note that the response from the member opposite failed to deal with the information I presented here today. It's a very complicated issue, and I think one of the problems is that most members don't understand the implications of MMBC. Um, perhaps uh, the information that MMBC is in fact a dummy corporation could have been addressed by the member. As a first step, I asked the member through the chair to uh, explain the inclusion of the acronym BC in the name MMBC. The Register of Societies requires written permission from the government before it allows our province's name to be used, and permission was in fact given. Obviously there was an error, deliberate I suspect, what criteria did the government use to allow this abuse of the province's good name? I call on the government to either immediately withdraw this permission or ensure at least 50% of the directors and members of the society reside in BC. EPR, or Extended Producers Responsibility Model, which transfers funding and management to corporate controlled associations, does not have a record of success in Canada or internationally. Ontario has a 25% recycling rate after years of EPR. The European Union, an early adopter of EPR, has an overall recycling rate of 35%. Countries in Europe with successful recycling rates have adopted other me measures, such as the deposit system, high tip fees, and disposal bans. The government would have us believe businesses in support of this plan, and of course many, like Walmart, Coca-Cola, Procter & Gamble are, because it advances their interests as opposed to the interests of the environment and of British Columbia. But the fact remains that many other businesses are strongly opposed. For example, business associations opposed include the BC Agriculture Council, Newspapers Canada, Community Newspapers Association of BC and Yukon, the BC Bottle Depot Association, and Canadian Manufacturers and Exporters. The newspaper industry estimates MMBC will cost their struggling industry $10 million a year and are refusing to participate, throwing the viability of this entire project into question. What will people of BC think when they learn the truth behind MMBC? If government doesn't take a step back, BC's recycling system is going to end up in a giant dumpster. The huge amount of effort has been invested into getting people to voluntarily recycle and change their habits. This government has put the public confidence in our recycling system at risk. To conclude, the control of recycling should never have been outsourced to large corporate interests based in Ontario and abroad. This is a profound failure. This program needs to be paused and the entire concept reconsidered. We owe it to the people of BC to get this right. Thank you. Thank you, Member.